Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here to film my Friday Reads video where I wrap up the weekend reading and any bookish things that go on. For the second time, I actually filmed it once and didn't realize I was filming in slow-mo. So we're trying this again. Hopefully this time it will work. But, you know, it is what it is. I usually would use something like that, like a tiny clip of it for my blooper reel, but I was so upset that I just deleted the whole thing. But anyway, it's okay. We're starting over and it's gonna be fine. I actually did finish a book this week and was really excited about that. I've had a really slow amount of progress in reading in February, but we'll talk about that when we get to the Friday Reads section a little bit later. The first thing I wanna talk about in my Friday Reads video is that the big book news was that Maggie O'Farrell has a new book coming out in September. She is, of course, the author of Hamnet, which won the Women's Prize in 2020. I was really glad a lot of people shared my enthusiasm for that announcement. I'll put a link to that video in the description box down below if you would like to check it out and get some details about the book because I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it now. There were some people who weren't as excited about Hamnet, so they're Excitement is a little more tempered, and that's fair, but I'm really excited, and a lot of other people were, so thank you, everyone, for sharing my excitement about that. The other news that happened this week is that Joel and I started watching Pose, which is on Netflix, but is apparently going to be leaving Netflix at the end of the month, so we've been trying to work our way through the first two seasons, which are the only ones that are on Netflix, and then I don't know if the third one is streaming or if it's going to be jumping to another one. I haven't researched it yet. But we are really enjoying that show. I think one of the things that was making us hold off is that it's set in the late 80s and, of course, is set in the LGBTQ community. So AIDS is a very prominent um, thing in the show. And I, we were both kind of worried about being emotionally devastated. And there are very sad elements of the show, but it's also very affirming and empowering and I, we're really enjoying it. So we've been trying to make progress. We're almost done with the first season. And uh, hopefully by the end of the month, we'll be done with the second season. And then we'll just need to find where the third season is streaming and we'll be done. But it's been a really great show. And it is affirming to me that I really want to read Billy Porter's memoir. Joel has already read it. And I need to get around to it. He reads the audiobook, and Joel said he does a really, really great job. So I'm looking forward to that as well and look forward to finishing the show. That's the really exciting thing that we've been watching. And uh, we'll leave it at that. The other thing I wanted to mention is that I had said earlier in the year that I was going to make this a transition year where I work my way off of Goodreads and onto the story graph. But I had said that I was thinking my transition would be a little bit slow and I would probably continue using Goodreads and putting updates on Goodreads for the entire year. And what has ended up happening is that I'm liking the story graph so much that I have stopped using Goodreads. So that transition kind of got sped up a little bit. I have not posted updates for I think the last two or three books that I read on Goodreads and I'm probably, I'm not gonna catch up. I'm just gonna make the switch to the story graph. A lot of people have jumped on to story graph and friended me there. If you are someone who follows me on Goodreads, I'm not going to delete my account, but if you want updates from that, you might want to think about story graph. If you haven't already, I have a link to my profile in the description box. You might need to be signed in for that link to take you to my profile. If it does not work, because it seems kind of hit or miss about whether or not it works. If it does not, you can go to the community tab, community tab and just search for Supposedly Fun. I don't think my name is attached to my profile on Storygraph. I can't remember if it is. But if you search Supposedly Fun, you should be able to find me, no problem. And again, there is a link. It should work if you are signed in. You might have to create an account if you don't already have one. But that's where I've been because... I am really enjoying Storygraph much more than Goodreads. The main appeal of Goodreads for a while is that that's where the community was, but the community is growing on Storygraph. And I just really like a lot of the features. You can get monthly analytics about your reading, which is really cool. And the functionality is just, I think, better. You can do buddy reads, read-alongs, reading challenges. I really enjoy it. So... Let that maybe be a bit of encouragement to you if you've been thinking about transitioning away from Goodreads. Uh, I, I really think the Storygraph is great. I've even been thinking about transitioning to a paid membership on Storygraph, but haven't made any commitments in that regard 
yet. I just think it's really great. Goodreads was a really great site when it first launched, and then once Amazon purchased it, there hasn't really been anything new. It's just sort of stagnating. And the reason I kept using it was that there really wasn't anything else to take its place, and the community was really great. But now the Storygraph exists, and I like it better, and the community is growing on that site. So I'm just, I think that's where I'm gonna live for now, uh, from now on. So again, if you would like to follow me on a reading social media platform, you can check out the story graph. Again, the link is in the description box down below. Uh, you could also, I guess, Instagram. I post dog photos and bookish things there. And again, the link is down there. So just an update on that because I know a lot of people had jumped onto my Goodreads profile and sent me a friend request there. So if you are one of those people, you are probably not going to be getting updates on Goodreads anytime soon. And I'm sorry about that, but I am really enjoying Storygraph and I hope that you will take the leap and join me there because I think it's better, but that's my two cents. Let's transition now into the Friday Reads portion of this video. I mentioned that I finally finished a book. I read eight books in January and so far in February, including the one that I just finished, I've only read two and we're halfway through the month. So odds are I'm probably only going to have half of what I read in January, but I'm fine with that because there's a reason I've been going much more slowly and we'll get into that a little bit more, but just the short version of it is that I've been reading two books at once, which I don't usually do. And one of them is a buddy read, Beloved, and we are kind of intentionally working our way through Beloved really slowly. And Beloved is a very emotionally taxing book. It takes up a lot of my emotional energy. So there are days when, even if the chapter is short, I don't really have the emotional bandwidth to jump into another book. And that's made it a slow reading month. But I'm totally fine with that because I always think the number of books you read should be less important than the quality. And hopefully the quality would be good. You're always rolling the dice every time you pick up a book. So the quality of the books has been high. I just so happened that the quality of the books I read in, in January was high as well, which is great. It's great when quality and quantity align with each other, but it doesn't always happen. And in, Jan in February, I have been taking a much slower approach to my reading, but I've been enjoying that as well. So I don't really feel all that bad about it. Anyway, the book I finished this week was The Membranes by Chi Tao Wei, which is translated by Ari Larissa Heinrich. The only part of this book I have not read yet is that there is a lot of supplemental material at the end, uh, actually by Ari Larissa Heinrich, writing about context of when this book was published, what it meant at the time it was published, in the location it was published, and how that relates to today. I think that's going to be really interesting, and I think it's going to be very helpful for this book, which was published in China in 1995. Chi Wei is a Taiwanese author, and I think that is going to be key. I was reading this for the LGBTQ in translation read-along, which is taking place in February and March, and then we'll, we'll transition into other books in April and May. This was the one that was the official choice for it. It's only small, really, really short, but it took me a while to get through it because I was really prioritizing Beloved. And like I said, my emotional bandwidth was pretty small. <laughs> and, but we'll talk more about Beloved, but that's why it took so long to get through this book. I'm going to save a lot of my thoughts on this book for the read-along group, which has been fantastic, by the way. And oh, there are a bunch of people who have not finished yet. So I don't really want to get into spoilers about the ending because it feels like, even though it's a short book, a lot of it is sort of setting up and world building and giving a lot of backstory or exposition. And then the book itself or the major thematic material really happens in the last 30 to 40 pages. So I enjoyed it, but I, I, I don't feel a strong attachment to it either. I gave it three stars on the story graph, but I think the supplemental material at the end of the book could really change that. We'll see how that goes. But We've already had some really interesting discussions about aspects of the book, but also just about LGBTQ literature in general. And I'll put a link to Jen's video where she announces the read-along for February and March, uh, which will have a link to the discussion group. There's still time to join in if you would like, because February and March is the reading period for this book. 
so you can still get a copy and read it if you'd like. But we've been talking a lot about how to define LGBTQ literature. And that's been a really interesting conversation. And actually, I think I'm going to be doing a whole video on that next week. I hesitate to say that because a lot of times recently I have said I'm going to do a video about this and then I end up not having the time or the bandwidth to do it and it just keeps getting pushed off. But I'm going to try to do a video about that next week because it's been a really interesting conversation because so much of it also depends on whether or not an author identifies as LGBTQ, whether or not there are LGBTQ characters or LGBTQ subject matter. But that can be tricky as well, because especially when you look back historically at books that were written in the past, a lot of authors did not identify as LGBTQ. First of all, because they didn't necessarily have the terminology, but also because different times, different levels of acceptance. So they might not have been able to come out and identify themselves. LGBTQ content in books was heavily censored, so you couldn't really openly talk about it. So if you say that an LGBTQ book has to have an LGBTQ author or like an out LGBTQ author and all that, are you limiting? It's a really interesting discussion, and I am going to save a lot of it for the video that I'm going to do next week. But if you have thoughts about how you define LGBT, LGBTQ literature, and if you define an LGBTQ book differently from how you define an LGBTQ classic, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below, and I'll do a video following up on it and maybe taking some of those comments as discussion points. So thank you in advance. Because this book really promises to be a sort of revolutionary speculative fiction book in terms of gender identity and queerness. And a lot of those elements are definitely there, but they can be a little bit subtle. And I did find that a little bit frustrating, but then I've only read two pages of the supplemental material so far. And one of the first things Ari Larissa Heinrich talks about there is that in Taiwan in 1995, you really couldn't talk about homosexuality openly. It was very taboo. So even small presence of those topics is uh, just wildly out there for the time and uh, revolutionary. So that is really deepening my appreciation of the book. And again, published in 1995 it, it, and being speculative fiction, there are things that it predicts inaccurately. Like it really thought laser discs were gonna be the thing, which amused me <laughs> because so many times the book, which is set uh, in the late 2000s, assumes that laser discs are still high tech. <laughs> and commonly used and dad yeah, that just didn't come to pass but at the same time in an, uh, in later in the book the main character is trying to explain that uh, uh, there's a laptop essentially a laptop that doesn't store any information on it it accesses the information remotely and i'm i was just sitting there nodding like cloud computing yes it's using a cloud and Shita Wei keeps explaining, I'm like, it's cloud computing. I get it. We use it now. <laughs> but back in 1995, you really wouldn't have had any understanding. And of course, the term cloud technology didn't exist at all. So there just had to be this sort of cumbersome explanation of how you would access information remotely. Uh, it also is set in a world where the ozone layer has completely depleted and humanity has mostly moved underwater into the oceans. A lot of this book is backstory and explanations of how that happened and what it was like, which seems a little bit dry, but I do feel like you kind of need that backstory. And since it's a short book, I didn't quite mind that as much as I might have otherwise, but I, it's a lot and it is interesting. And again, one of the things is interesting that it focuses so much on the ozone layer and climate change. You don't necessarily talk about the ozone layer all that much, but anymore that is but that would have been the big buzzword at the time uh, there's reference to an AIDS vaccine which we don't really have we have much more preventive measures but it, so it's interesting what it gets right what it doesn't and I'm going to save a lot of my thoughts on this one for the reading group when people finish but I am looking forward to the conversation in the read-along group and I did finish this book and um, we'll, we'll I'm a, I look forward to talking more about it and reading the supplemental material to see uh, if that really changes my opinion of the book more. 
I already mentioned that I'm still working on Beloved. So this is a buddy read I'm doing with Amelia. Amelia Reads, who is a commenter. We have been slowly working our way through because, as I said, but that's what the approach we took to Song of Solomon when we read that book together. And it really pays off because even in short chapters, Toni Morrison packs a lot of information or can move the plot forward very se severely in just a short amount of time. I, I say severely, but yeah, sometimes it is harsh, but sometimes she can just pack a lot of information into a small amount of pages. And there's always a lot to talk about, even if it's a short chapter. And Toni Morrison is a master of that. So and because she is really deliberate about things like word choice, you really have to pay attention to it. You have to be an active reader with this book. And we are a little more than halfway. I, I, we should be done by February. But because we've been taking a slow approach, I, I haven't made a lot of progress. That's, that's why it took me such a long time to finish The Membranes and... I am thinking I'll pick up another book uh, to replace the membranes while I continue to work on Beloved. And that is something, because I will be doing two books at once, I'll be doing a slow approach to that as well. And that's fine. But I'm really enjoying this. I was saying to Amelia that I wasn't sure I was liking Beloved as much as Song of Solomon, because when I was reading Song of Solomon, I was just floored. And I don't have that same feeling reading Beloved, although I am really impressed and enjoying the book a lot. And I finally realized that... When I read Song of Solomon, I had never read another book like that. Even the other two, Tony Mor three Toni Morrison books that I have read, um, Home, The Bluest Eye, and Love. Uh, or actually, I read Love after Song of Solomon, but point stands. Um, I, I had never read anything like that. And now I'm reading Beloved, and I have read something like this because of Song of Solomon. So it's very much in the same wheelhouse as Song of Solomon, but because it's not new uh, it, it doesn't feel as revolutionary, but it is a really great book and I'm enjoying it very much. And I look forward to talking more about it once I finish. We, again, we should be done by the end of February. I did make a lot of progress in the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois this week. That's the audio I am working on. I had started it in January and put it to the side when I got sick with COVID. And it took about three weeks for me to get back to it. So I mentioned in last week's Friday Reads video that I had restarted it. And I had made it just about to where I was. I think I was 10% in last week. I am currently 20% in. And it did feel a little discouraging because it's a really long book. It's a 30-hour audiobook. So I would feel like I made a lot of progress today. And then I would look and it, the percentage hadn't moved all that much. That felt a little discouraging. But I am into the book. I'm enjoying it. This is something that I am feeling like has a lot of potential to win the Pulitzer Prize this year when it is announced later on. I already have my list of prediction books for the Pulitzer Prize, but I'm, I'm probably going to film the video either at the end of this month or at the beginning of March. More likely the beginning of March. I don't want to be too early. So that's to come. But I will be talking about love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois in that video when I get around to it. I am enjoying it. It does feel a little bit slow right now. But I think once I really get into it a little bit more, it's going to start flowing a little bit better. It had a really strong introduction, and now it feels like it dipped just a little bit. And I'm kind of waiting for things to pick up. And I think I think it will. I'm, I definitely think it will. So I will continue working on that this week. Now that I've finished the membranes, like I said, I am going to pick up another book on the side, just supplemental, while I continue to slowly work on Beloved. And that is going to be a new book I got from the library, The Wrong End of the Telescope by Robbie Alamedine. This is something that really jumped onto my radar when the ALA chose it as a notable book for last year. I'll put a link to my video where I reacted to that list down below because there were a lot of really interesting books. And the way they talked about this book is what really made me say, I have to read this immediately. So I got it from the library. Uh, I believe it's due back at the beginning of March, so I'm going to have to make some progress on it. It's going to be slow, but again, I'm totally fine with that. And because it's going to be <laughs> something I'm uh, working on at the same time I'm doing Beloved, which is slow, emotional, and very active participation. So uh, I'll probably start this this weekend if we have some downtime to snuggle with the puppies on either Saturday or Sunday morning, or both, hopefully, because that is always a fun thing to do. So I will be starting this. And uh, hopefully I will report back to you in my next Friday Reads video. Once I finish Beloved and The Wrong End of the Telescope, I am feeling like I'm going to need a bit of a palate cleanser, something light 
and amusing and uh, and kind of easy to get through. And I was actually granted access to a an LGBTQ romance book on NetGalley. So that is probably the one that I'm going to jump into once I'm done with Wrong End of the, End of the Telescope and Beloved. And that is called Book Boyfriend by Chris Ripper. Uh, I think that'll be a fun palette cleanser something to lighten up my mood and help me go on because the other book that was part of the LGBTQ in translation read along for February and March, the, the unofficial choice is uh, To the Friend Who Did Not Save My Life by Hervé Gobert, translated by Linda Coverdale. And I do want to read that in March, but I feel like going from Beloved to a book about someone dying of AIDS, I'm going to need something happy. <laughs> so hopefully Book Boyfriend will do that for me. So that's everything I've had going on in my reading life this week and in the bookish world. I'd love to hear what you've been up to. If you've watched Pose, what you've been loving, what you've been hating, leave all of that in the comment section down below. As always, I really appreciate your time and I will be back until next time. Happy reading.